Hello again, it's so nice to see you back and today I have a black canvas I will paint a little scene in a forest uh, with a very nice stream, some nice bushes and trees and what I have done is that I have painted a white canvas with black gesso allowed that to dry completely and on top of that I have covered the entire surface with a thin even coat of sub green and thalo blue just brass mixed colors and I have covered the entire surface the same way I did if I had a uh, liquid clear or liquid white so I have added no liquid clear in here our medium today is a firm dry paint okay so let's get off immediately I'm gonna take a 2 inch brush clean and dry and I will go into some titanium white let's decide where our light source is just tap in some paint and let's say that in here we have our light source it's very important to have a clean and dry brush for that and using crisscross strokes we work back outwards and as you can see the white mixes with a color that we already have in the canvas Okay, now as we always do, we want to have a distinct light source, so I'm gonna take another clean and dry brush, don't want to waste time washing my brush now, go into some titanium white and do the same thing. And it's up to you to decide how strong your light is gonna be. making crisscross strokes as always and we do these strokes because our color blends better and the further away we are from the light source the darker our corners are gonna be there we go alright now we will wash our brush we're running out of brushes and we always use odorless paint thinner for that Make sure you have a very dry brush. There we go. And now we will blend this outwards, soften it up a little bit. And we will also remove the brush strokes. I really don't suggest you beat the, br the brush against your your easel because you're gonna make a mess do not try to copy me okay now very lightly we'll go across here and remove the brush strokes okay now I want to have some far away green indications here and I'm gonna take the same brush that I used to make the background, I mean the firm uh, medium, I'm gonna go into some halo blue and some sun green here. Just brush mix them. It's up to you to decide the value of the color and tap firmly. So let's go in here and have some three indications just using the corner of the brush here just tap in some nice three indications that are far far away using just the corner and as you go further from the light source you can add a little bit of brush and blue probably darken it a little bit and just tap just tap in here Let's have a big tree in here. I'm going to add a little bit of midnight black to that. But you can still see some light play through. Alright. Let's do the same on the other side. I'm going to have sub green and Taylor blue. 
just brush mix your color today. And let's have another small in here, why not? And as you can see with just the corner of the brush you can have a little tree. You only need to practice for that. And every time you're gonna get better. Small tree here. Let's have another one. Maybe this one is bigger. Darken your color a little bit. I use brush in blue now and sub green. Okay. And you can also come down here and put some shadows and we're gonna have some grass in here. And by the time we already have the black gesso and the dark color above, we really have nothing to worry. Okay, let's take a liner brush, let's have some trunks and a little bit of highlighting here. I'm gonna go into some paint thinner with my liner brush and a small amount of dark sienna. Not much paint, just a little bit. And let's go in here and have a little tree trunk. But do not pay attention to detail right now. Because we're far away, we have lots of shadows. There you go. And it will be easier for your paint to stick now that we have firm paint underneath. Let's go to this side too. Just some indications of some little tree trunks here and there. And it adds interest if you leave a little gap in here. So you won't allow the whole trunk to show through. Alright, let's take a one inch brush now. And let's go into some kind of yellow. Not very much though. I'm gonna add some of this green and blue mixture that I already have. And let's highlight this. Just pull some paint, tap it in a little bit more green and just tap, I pull the paint out and tap tap the bristles and have a little roll of paint in here and the palette and this roll actually is loaded to the end of the bristles and using just the corner of the brush we go up here and we add some highlights not much though Let's make it a little bit more distinct for you to see. And if your paint won't stick, add the little amount of paint thinner to your brush, as we always do. Remember that a thin paint sticks to a thick paint. Add some yellow ochre. Let's come up here. And remember your, where your light source is. A little bit more paint. Play through the yellows and the greens. And as you go down, you want it darker and darker. A little bit more paint here in the edges. And as you go further away, add more green to your brush. Let's go up in here. As you can see, not much paint, not much detail. A little bit more here. And this one too. Just the smallest amount of highlight. Okay, let's go to the other side too, back to the yellow. And let's go up here. Can you see how nice it looks? And using just the corner of the brush is very, very important to have the nice highlights we have here. And as you can see, we have uh, lighter highlights in here that we are closest, closer. 
to our light source. See, up here, I'm going to add some Indian yellow to that. There we go. And a little bit of darker green down here. I'm going to add some yellow blue, make it even darker, and go up here and have very dark leaves. And let them come above this one. This will add depth. Okay. So let's leave this brush down. See what we have already. And we're gonna have some nice bushes in here. So before that I want to add some other trees too. We want to have another layer in my painting. So I'm gonna go with my silver brush into some of my dark sienna and as you can see I'm careful because I have loose paint in here not to drag it back to the film one. So I have Van Dyke brown and dark sienna and let's add a couple of tree trunks. Let's say that we have a trunk in here. Maybe there is another one in here. Don't worry about the shape because trees come in every shape you can imagine. Let's have some on the other side too. I want to have one in here. Okay. And let's add some uh, branches to this one. I'm gonna go into my liner brush again and my thin color. I'm gonna take some Van Dyke Brown this time. I want this color to match the color of the tree trunks. So we'll add some sticks here, some nice branches. Not much to worry. Just here and there, wherever you want. Let's go back in this side. And I really like these black canvases and I hope you get to enjoy them. Okay. I don't want some highlights right now, I just want these to play back here in the darkness. It's just another layer. Let me fix this tree trunk a bit. In here. You can have a small. You can have a small branch if you want. There is nothing you cannot fix here. Can you see how easy it is. Even if you do not have, if you think you do not have the best result, you can always go back and fix it. It's very very easy to do. Okay. Now let's add some bushes. Let's come a bit closer. And I'm gonna take, let's take the twins brush today. I'm gonna go into my yellows and greens. Just tap some color with the edge of the brush. Just tap, using just the corner. And let's come up here. And let's just tap some bush indications just here and there. Play through your colors. Play through the yellow and the green. I'm going to add the slightest amount of bright right to that. You can see probably there is a bush hidden in here that has flowers. And we have darkness due to this tree. This one comes forward. Let's have a big nice bush here, with lots and lots of leaves. And by the time we have a slightest thinner paint in here, we're not worried to mix mud with this tree. Add some yellow to this one. And you paint layer after layer when it comes to bushes. Maybe bushes are a bit darker back here 
because of the lack of light, you cannot see much. Let's go to the other side too. Let's come back in here, maybe a little bit lighter. There you go. That easily. I'm gonna add some yellow ochre to that. And you can use whatever brush you want for that. I just like using the twins brush and it was already dirty. So why not? Just add a bit more darker color in here. Lots of shadows. Okay, so I'll show you a trick. As we are closer to the light source, I'm gonna take some titanium white in the same way. And let's come in here and just highlight this a little bit with white paint. More light is gonna hit those particular bushes. Maybe a little bit in here too, but be very gentle. This is a very gentle touch. There you go. Now you can see it better, I think. Okay. Now I want to have some grassy areas that are gonna include a little bit of a little stream that I want to make. So I'm gonna go with the same brush and let's take some cadmium yellow. Lots of paint for this one. Some sub green. And just push. Tap and push. This loads the brush properly. Just push. Okay? So let's come up here and let's decide the lay of the land. So I will come in here and just gently tra tapping. I'm gonna add some soft grass in here. But very gently tapping in here. Remember to reload your brush properly and leave some gaps in between. That's gonna add depth and interest to your painting. And I'm starting from here instead of the edge of the canvas because I want these places in here more distinct due to the light that's playing through the grass as it's closer to the light source. Maybe some more grass here. And can you see how many layers we already have? That easily. Okay, let's go to the other side too. Add some Indian yellow, some yellow ochre. Always remember to tap the brush properly. And we hardly using any pressure here. Because if you use more pressure, you're not gonna have these distinct uh, grassy highlights you want. But if you want, you can just keep tapping and when this dries, it will become a very nice soft grass effect. It always depends to you, just do whatever you like. I'm just showing you the way. I have another, another layer in here. Okay, so let's have some rocks or something to hold on this. I'm gonna take my knife, this is a number 10 knife. And I'm gonna go into some uh, dark colors. I'm gonna take some Van Dyke Brown. I'm gonna pull out very flat, pull it very flat, and get a little roll of paint. And by the time we already have a dark color and the black gesture obviously on canvas, we do not have to worry about uh, making lots of dark areas in here. I just want some rocks to hold the grass and seclude the waterfall probably. Just fill this in nicely. And it will be very interesting that when we add the highlights, these colors are gonna mix, the dark color is gonna mix with the highlight and we already have paint on the canvas, our medium for today. We're using the yellow blue and sub green brass mixed Okay, just push this in. 
nothing to worry about. Okay. Now I'm gonna add some highlights. I'm gonna take some titanium white and some of my dark sienna and let it a little bit marbly as this one cut off a little roll of paint and you can see the variation of colors so the same way we do with the mountains I, using no pressure at all I'm gonna caress this and just add the highlights and as you can see with only one fine roll we highlighted all of our rocks here but it's very important to have a very dry paint and use no pressure at all it's very very important so I'm gonna bring all this together I'm gonna take the small brush now I'm gonna take the one brush the one inch brush add a lot of paint and go to some some green and cadmium yellow I'm gonna add the least little amount of paint in there because I want this to stick better some sap green and tap this you know just tap it's very important to load the brush properly so I will come above here and as you can see we're bringing all of this together and I'm doing that first of all to show you that you can also use the orange brush to make the same brush we did with a big brush and also I think that the one brush sneaks better in here in the small places. So let's come in here and just sneak in some nice grass above these nice rocks we built. What do you think? And let's go to the other side too. We're gonna take more green, come in here and bring this together. And if you have problem making your paint stick, just add the least little amount of paint in there. Right now our paint is okay. Alright. Now as I told you I want to have a little waterfall back in here. So I'm gonna take my fan brush, this is a number 6 fan brush. And I want to go into some titanium white and some liquid white. I'm gonna make a watercolor gonna clean the spot of my palette. So liquid white on the fan brush. And the liquid white is here just to thin the paint down. So we have liquid white, firm white, and a little amount of phthalo blue. We already have color on the canvas anyway, but I want the slightest amount of blue in here. Load the brush nicely, tap it a little bit if you want. So, let's decide where the stream comes from. Let's say that it comes from back here. So I'm gonna rub this a little bit. Here comes the stream. And reload it right now. You have the splashes. So, the splashes come right above the rocks. Just bring this down just try to do them with one go and as you can see it's always picking some color that we already have on the canvas now add some splashes and as you can see through the water we can see the rocks so that's what we are looking for now we're gonna add some splashes in here and rub this a little bit. And as you can see the color is mixing with the underpaint, the pale of blue and the soft green. Okay. Now let's say that we want to have some bushes in here, another layer in our painting. So let's take the brush that we did the grass with, but I said I'll change brush and go to this one. I will keep the other one for my grass. Go into the yellows and the greens. 
in yellow over Indian yellow. Tap it nicely and I'm just, I hope you can see it, I'm just using the corner, I'm just tapping the corner of the bristles. Okay, I really hope you can see it. So let's come in here and some bushes leave right here in the stream, near the stream. And they also push the rocks back on another layer of depth in our painting. We're gonna main we're gonna paint some other rocks too. Add a little bit of bright red to that. Just experiment a little bit with your with your colors. Let's go to the other side too. It's always always up to you to decide the value. These bushes are very lucky they are hit by a nice cool stream. They always have fun. Alright. I'm gonna add another layer right now. I'm gonna take some Van Dyke Brown and make a nice uh, bank. I just rub this. It's just something to hold my bushes in here. It's very easy to do, probably the easiest way. And as you can see, I push the paint firmly. Other times we're just uh, using the roll of paint to caress. Now we're pushing. And just try to make those straight. As straight as possible. It always takes time to master something like this. I think it's more difficult to do something in here that is straight and correct looking than just painting a tree that you do certain steps for that. Okay, I'm gonna highlight those with the same white and sienna color. Very, very gentle. And let's come to this side too. Okay. I'm gonna take the same brush and bring all this together. Just the corner of the brush. And if you think your paint won't stick, just add the least little amount of paint thinner. Bring all this together. And a little bit to the other side too. Just in here. Gentle, gentle touch. Okay. I'm gonna go back to my fan brush with a waterfall color. Some white, some uh, liquid white, some phthalo blue, and just rub this. If you think your paint won't flow, just add some more of the liquid white. And I want to have a nice water effect in here. Just rub it. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the liquid white, some firm white, and make some nice water lines here. Just clean the edges of this. And I always like painting secluded, secluded uh, fountains. So we have done some like this in the past, but you can just carry on and do another layer and another layer of waterfalls. It's always, always up to you. Okay. Rub it up a little bit more. And in here a little bit. And you know, it's very wise sometimes to step back and see what we already have. Uh, fix what we do not like or not. So let's step back in here and I'm pretty satisfied. You can have another layer of tree trunks if you want in here in the middle but I prefer to leave it like this and I'm gonna add now some more uh, bushes down here to seclude all this but tell you that I want to have it a little bit darker so let's take some dark color, I'm gonna go into some Van Dyke Brown, some Midnight Black not much paint though and let's have some uh, 
Shadow for four our bushes. But I don't need much anyway, just the outside, the top of the bushes because we already have dark color in here due to the gesso. And it's very important to let the black gesso dry completely, really completely before you start painting on top of that. The gesso is an acrylic water-based paint and it's actually working like a barrier between uh, the canvas fabric and our oil paints. So we can work easily on top of gesso with oil paints. But you cannot do the opposite, you cannot work with watercolors or acrylics on top of oils. So I have added in here uh, the dark color that I need. I'm gonna go into some yellow, some yellow ochre, some bright red, some of my green. Just a multitude of colors. Can you see what's going on in here? That's what I want. And let's come in here. Can you see how nice this color is looking? Another big bush leaves here. Another nice one. Always, always using the tip of the bristles. Maybe there are some leaves in here hiding. Probably there is a nice frog living somewhere in here. I like frogs. Seems very funny to me. And a little bit more foliage in here. Now I have another layer down there. Remember to leave some dark areas in between those in order for them to be separate. Okay. Now I want to add a little bit more interest to this painting. I want to have a big tree or two. I've not decided yet. So let's do it. Let's take some Van Dyke Brown, some Midnight Black. Remember to darken the color as you come closer to the foreground. And let's decide. Let's go in here. There you go. A bravery test for you. Make it a little bit thicker. And as you can see we have pushed back all the other aspects. Reload the brush and go in here too. Let's take and go in here. If you don't want these trees, you can certainly leave them out. I just think they add interest to a painting. And it's also good practice. I've done multiple such trees in the past and I just want to show you. Alright, let's go in here again. I want to have a tree in here. And as you can see, I've come a little bit closer. The root is closer to us compared to the other tree in the back. And I've also pushed back the other tree that I didn't like a lot. There we go. Now let's take our knife with our white and sienna and I'm gonna add the least little amount of bright red to that not much and take some dark sienna too having a multitude of colors here cut off a little roll of paint very small roll and probably even smaller don't want much paint okay so I will come up here and just by touching, I'm gonna make a nice tree trunk. Just touch. Very gentle. This is a very, very relaxing procedure. I really hope you find it interesting. And I hope if you're not painting, you really find our episode relaxing and interesting but as I've told you before 
my ultimate goal is to make you paint if you're already not and help you with problems if you are painting. Okay, let's add just a couple more of the highlights here. Go to the other tree too. Just touch. And I think that the bright red in this one adds a little interest. It's not just brown and white, but it's also a little bit a little bit pinkish. You can also add yellow ochre if you want. Okay. Just touch with your knife. This little roll of paint. Bring it a little bit closer too. Let's go to the other side. Remember where your light source is and come in here. It would really be a dreadful mistake to do this the other way. But tell you that even if you did it, you could still fix it just by scraping off the paint and repaint the tree. You really can't make a mistake in here. Although that I want to share a secret with you. I painted this painting last week to film it for today. But I made a dreadful mistake in the background. I just added some random tree trunks that were just floating around the canvas. And I only got to realize that when I finished filming the episode and I was like, man, you really messed up. So I'm repainting this for you today to show you how it was done. This is done in the past too by me. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you might remember the picture. Okay, just a little bit more of the highlight color here. And let's make a shadow color. Now I'm gonna take some of the white. Not much though. And I'm gonna go into some halo blue and some Van Dyke brown, a little bit more brown, kind of grayish color, pull that very flat, cut off the roll of paint, and can you see that we have brown, white, blue, blue, brown, white, you know, just a multitude of colors. I'm always getting excited when I see what everybody can do, not just me. You really can do that too, it's very, very easy if you have the right equipment. And it's very important not to give up when you're making mistakes or you have accidents or something. Just feel free to ask a friend of yours that knows what tutorials online. I only got to learn to paint by watching Bob Ross on television and on the internet and I'm really grateful for that it's probably one of the most amazing things that have ever happened to me and the reason I made this channel was to carry on a legacy from some people that back in the day really wanted to share their dream and I really feel these people are like family to me although they were all dead before I was born Anyway, I just want to help you, give you inspiration, that's the purpose of my channel. So in here I have got some greyish kind of shadow color, some reflected light, just touch, can you see that just by touching we're having a fantastic tree trunk already just by using the knife alright now I'm gonna take some of the original trunk color the black and the, the black and the brown and bring all this together it's very important to do that because as you can see we're having 
more detail now in our tree trunk. Very, very, very gentle touch here. Okay, let's go to the other trees too. Take some color. This is low, I'm sorry, this is black and brown. Very, very little color. Can you see the details? Alright, and let's do the other one too. You can have as many or as few trees as you want, or no trees at all. You really don't have to worry about what I'm doing here, but worry how I do something. That's what I want you to show. That's what I want to show to you. All right. Now I'm gonna take my liner brush with some black and some brown and take some paint thinner. I'm gonna have black and some Van Dyke brown. Thin this down as necessary. Add more paint thinner if your paint won't flow. And let's have some uh, limbs in here. Let's come up here. Decide where your limbs are hanging. Add more paint in there if your paint won't stick. And you really need to make this distinct. I'm adding a little bit more paint so I can show it to you better. Play through the brown and the black. And let's have one here that's more distinct to you. I'm close to the canvas so I can see them. So, And go to the other tree too. Just use the corner, the edge of your liner brush and not the whole bunch of bristles going here. Shake your hand a little bit when you do this. Some nice limbs hanging here. And we're gonna make some bushes on the bottom of those in order to bring this together. Going up into my highlight colors. And as you can see, we push them back. We bring all this together. And a little bit in here too. And we have a completed painting. I really hope you enjoyed what we did here today. It's a very easy painting. It's a very nice effect on black canvas. You can do it with any transparent color that you want. And you decide if you want uh, the trees in the background, the bushes in here, whatever you want, you can do in here. So until next time, happy painting and take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon.